From a man who entered a bar and was never seen or heard from again, to a teenage girl who disappeared while on spring break, there are seven people who vanished without a trace. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to They Will Kill You, hit the like button and request any topics you'd like to learn about in the comments section below. Number 7. Brian Schaefer On March 31, 2006, Brian Schaefer, a medical student from Ohio State University, was out drinking with friends to celebrate the beginning of spring break. They started their night at a bar called the Ugly Tuna Saluna and then went bar hopping. After midnight, they returned to the Ugly Tuna where Brian was separated from his friends who eventually assumed he'd gone home. Brian was recorded by a security camera at the Ugly Tuna Saluna at 1.55 a.m. on April the 1st. He was talking to two young women and saying goodbye. Shortly afterwards, at 2 a.m., Brian entered the bar but was never recorded leaving. In fact, he was never seen or heard from again. The puzzling aspect is that there were no other entrances to the bar accessible to the public and the surveillance video hadn't been tampered with. The case received media attention throughout the US. Even though he'd recently lost his mother, Brian was doing well in school and made plans to go on vacation with his girlfriend. Columbus police considered many possibilities, including briefly that he might have been a victim of the smiley face serial killer. While this hypothesis was later abandoned, foul play hasn't been ruled out. Some suspicion fell on one of Brian's friends who'd been out with him that night and who later refused to take a lie detector test. There's also a theory that he might be alive and living somewhere else. The truth so far is that no one knows or is unwilling to talk about what happened to Brian Schaefer. Number 6. Barbara Bollock In July 2007, Barbara Bollock from Corvallis, Montana went on a hiking trip in the Bitterroot Mountains. She was joined by her friend, Jim Ramaka, who was visiting from California. At one point, as they were approaching an overlook, Jim stopped to admire the view. In doing so, he turned his head from Barbara, who was about 20 to 30 feet behind him at the time, for less than a minute. However, when Jim turned his head back, he found that Barbara had completely disappeared. Jim alerted the authorities who launched a thorough search of the area but never found any trace of the 55-year-old woman. Naturally, Jim became the main suspect when foul play was proposed as a hypothesis. Nevertheless, there was no obvious motive or any evidence linking him to her disappearance. Moreover, the man was reportedly very cooperative with the investigators and had he been the one responsible, a better story would be expected than that she had vanished into thin air. Jim was ruled out as a suspect more than a decade since Barbara Bollock disappeared. There's still no explanation for what happened. Number 5. Maura Murray Maura Murray disappeared in February 2004 after emailing her employer and professors at the University of Massachusetts that she had to take a week off due to a family emergency, a claim her family couldn't corroborate. On the evening of February the 9th, she crashed her car into a tree near Woodsville, New Hampshire. A bus driver returning home stopped and asked Maura if she was hurt and if she needed him to call the police. According to one report, the woman pleaded with him not to call the police and assured him that she was all right and that she'd already called AAA. In reality, no such call was ever recorded. The bus driver knew reception in the area was bad, so he called the authorities when he got home. When the police arrived at the site of the accident, about 20 minutes later, Maura's car was there, but the young woman was gone. There was no sign of a struggle. Her cell phone, debit and credit cards were missing but haven't been used since. Nobody knows for sure what happened to her, but the next day, Maura's fiance in Oklahoma received a voicemail, which could have been from her. There were no words and all the man heard was sobbing at the other end. In 2009, Murray's case was given to New Hampshire's cold case division, but some suspect that she's disappeared on purpose. Number four, Brandon Swanson. On May the 14th, 2008, Brandon Swanson was returning to his hometown of Marshall, Minnesota, 
after celebrating the end of the spring semester. Shortly after midnight, the 19-year-old veered off the road and drove his car into a ditch. Brandon wasn't hurt, but he didn't know exactly where he was, so he called his parents on his cell phone. He asked them to come pick him up and that he thought he was somewhere near Lind. His parents were unable to locate Brandon, who stayed on the phone with him for about 45 minutes. Then the phone call ended abruptly, with Brandon exclaiming, Oh shit, that was the last time he was ever heard from. The following morning, his parents went to the police to report him missing, but were told to be patient, as this type of behavior was common for young men his age. However, phone records subsequently revealed that he'd been near Porter, 25 miles in a different direction from where he said he was. That's when the circumstances of his disappearance got more complicated. His car was eventually located near Taunton, but there was no sign of Brandon. Foul play wasn't ruled out, but there's also a theory that he might have accidentally fallen in the Yellow Medicine River and drowned. After years of extensive searches, his body was never found. Number 3. Nicole Morin The day was July 30th, 1985. At 10.30am, 8-year-old Nicole Morin left her mother's penthouse apartment in Toronto, Ontario. She went to the lobby of the 20-story West Mall apartment building to get the mail. Afterwards, she returned to the apartment and spoke to a friend on the intercom whom she'd made plans with to swim in the building's pool. At 11 a.m., the little girl said goodbye to her mother and left the apartment. About 50 minutes later, her friend called the intercom to ask why Nicole hadn't arrived. She was last seen in the hallway of the penthouse or, according to one report, entering the elevator. More than three decades after she vanished, after one of the largest police investigations in Toronto's history, there's still no evidence to indicate what might have happened to her. One popular theory is that she was abducted as soon as she left the penthouse, but it seems unlikely that such an act committed in broad daylight in a building of many tenants would have gone unnoticed. Number 2. Michael Negret 18-year-old Michael Negret attended UCLA on a music scholarship and was reportedly a popular freshman. On December 10, 1999, he went to a party on the floor he lived on at Dijkstra Hall. Michael then returned to his room where he played an online game with his friends until about 4 a.m. He briefly went to congratulate another player and was last seen returning to his own room. What's strange is that when his roommate woke up at 9 a.m., Michael's keys, wallet, shoes, clothing, and musical instruments were still there. However, Michael was nowhere to be found. Nobody had seen him since 4 a.m., and as of November 2018, there still haven't been any confirmed sightings of Michael Negret. Extensive searches were carried out with bloodhounds, and over 500 leads were submitted. Michael's parents hired private detectives and offered a $100,000 reward for any information leading to his whereabouts. Nothing ever panned out. There was just one promising lead several students had given, a Caucasian man who no one could account for. He was on the floor the night of Michael's disappearance. A sketch was released and the police urged the man to come forward, stressing that he wasn't under investigation. No one ever did. Theories regarding Michael's disappearance have included abduction and homicide, possibly connected to the illegal trade of human organs. Number 1. Brittany Drexel While on spring break in April 2009, 17-year-old Brittany Marie Drexel disappeared from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina while she was on spring break. The teenager told her mother that she was going to stay at a friend's house in Rochester, New York, which was closer to home. Brittany was last seen at about 9 p.m. on a surveillance camera, leaving the Blue Water Resort. At the hotel, she visited 20-year-old club promoter Peter Brozowitz, an acquaintance from Rochester. Brittany was texting with her boyfriend, John, on the way back to her hotel, which was about a mile away. Then, the text suddenly stopped, and John's phone calls went straight to voicemail. That's when he called Brittany's mother and told her that she'd actually gone to Myrtle Beach. The parents were devastated when it soon emerged that their daughter had gone missing. The last time her cell phone pinged was in an area rife with swamps and alligators. Brittany was never seen again and her body was never found. Between 1 and 2 a.m., 
Brozovich abruptly left his hotel and returned to Rochester, but the four friends he'd been sharing a room with stayed behind. However, none of the men were conclusively linked to Brittany's disappearance. There's a belief that she was abducted and fell victim to human trafficking. The last report on the case came from a jailhouse confession in 2016. Taquan Brown was serving time for voluntary manslaughter in a different case and his story on the matter was for many hard to hear. It involved Brittany being gang raped for several days and subsequently shot, killed and fed to the alligators. Brown named Deshaun Taylor as the man responsible and his story was corroborated by another inmate who gave his account to an FBI agent. However, both inmate stories lacked the substance necessary to build a case and Taylor completely denied the allegations. So far, nobody has been charged in Brittany Drexel's disappearance. Thanks for watching. Do you know other cases of people vanishing without a trace? Tell us about them in the comments section below.